In this video, we're going to look at how to use the theme engine in PowerShell Universal v4. The theme engine is used for apps inside your uh, Universal instance, and you can do all kinds of things like changing colors, um, different text sizes, or even applying styles to individual components based on um, t particular criteria. So by default, we're actually running what's called the Ant Design theme, and the Ant Design theme is built uh, based on the Ant Design library, so you kind of have the look and feel. Um, where it's the same between the admin console as it is between a running app. So I just have um, a demo, the demo app up and running here, and as you can see, this is the Ant Design theme. It supports both light and dark themes, and uh, it comes built in. To change the theme to one of our other built-in themes, you can actually use uh, Get UD Theme to do so. So I'm going to switch to the Atom theme and save that. And that will reload PowerShell Universal, and you'll see that now I'm using a completely different theme. Um, not only do the ch the colors change, but you'll notice things like the scroll bar changed, and um, the the border radius around these list items has changed, so that it's actually rounded instead of square uh, with the um, Ant Design theme. And if you actually looked in the installation directory of PowerShell Universal, you'll see that we have tons of themes built on JSON. So a lot of these themes uh, have a similar look and feel to the one I just showed, but they just have different colors. So there's tons and tons of themes in there. Uh, the default theme for uh, Material UI, which is the um, client side library we're using, is actually Material Design. So if you um, use this theme, effectively it kind of turns off any theme that we have built. So this is kind of the standard look and feel for this design library. So you can switch to that um, to kind of go back to basics for uh, the theme. If you want to create your own theme, what you can actually do is use new UD theme to do kind of some basic configuration of the theme. So this doesn't support all the configurations. It's just kind of a helper commandlet that generates a hash table that is then used as the theme. So uh, I've set the background um, to blue and then my secondary color to white. And if I save this, it's going to reload. And now you can see the background color is blue. So um, it's just a quick way to uh, adjust a theme based on um, a simple command line here, and um, primarily just for colors. If you do want to get a little more uh, creative, what you can actually do is extend the current themes. So each theme just is returned as a hash table, and um, that theme is then serialized and sent down to the browser. So if you use get UD theme, what you can actually do is adjust the theme by adjusting the properties of this hash table. So I'm actually digging into uh, this theme. I'm setting the background color for our ant design theme. So I'll save that and reload. And now you can see I have the ant design theme, but it has the green background. So all I did was adjust that, but I still have the same styling of um, the ant design theme that's kind of out of the box. If you want to get really involved, um, you can actually create your own themes from scratch. So I'm going to kind of step through the basics and get into some advanced topics uh, around this. Um, we just get a lot of questions on the forums about uh, this particular topic. So what I'm going to do is kind of step through the layout of this, kind of where it comes from, talk a little bit about how to uh, find things that you can tweak, and then we'll look at how that plays out inside our app here. So like I said, uh, every theme is just a hash table. And where that hash table actually comes from is from the Material UI framework. So if you actually go to the Material UI website here, you can see they have a default theme viewer. And this actually is kind of how we create our themes. So they have an example of effectively their hash table of options for the default theme. So you don't need to include all these things. It'll kind of merge with this existing one. Um, but in this example here, you know, you can see the palette colors for uh, their light theme. And if you were to switch over to the dark theme, it would show all the, you know, the palette colors for the dark theme. So that's kind of where the format of this hash table comes from. Um, so as you can see here, I'm creating a custom theme. I'm overriding some of the palettes. Um, you can see I have a um, light, main, and dark palette color for my custom theme. And I've actually updated my dashboard down here to use that custom theme rather than the built-in theme. So I'm going to save this. It does have a lot of other things going on that I'll talk about in just a second. If we actually go over to our dashboard once it reloads, it reloads. Start that. There we go. 
You can see that we have this custom theme applied now. So this has done some stuff, especially you can see on the left side with the drawer where it's a, kind of this blue color and everything. Um, and it's actually done a lot more than just set colors. So we've actually done some stuff to the buttons and um, like the, the drawer styling and that kind of thing. And um, we can kind of uh, step through our theme to kind of see how that, that's done. So aside from just the palette, there's also properties you can do things with uh, the typography, so the text. You can set sizes for the different um, text types, like this is a header 5. You could have a header level 1, set different um, uh, styles to that. And these are all just CSS styles at this point. So while these are just kind of um, options that you're setting here, these are actually CSS styles that we're actually setting um, inside our hash table. Where it gets really interesting is where you uh, get down to the override section. So the override section actually allows you to override individual components properties. So in this case, what I'm overriding here is the drawer. And the drawer is made up of several components. And one of those components is the paper component. And then I'm setting the background. So obviously, it's very uh, hard to understand like where you would even begin to look to find the correct format for this. And that's actually going to come from the Material UI um, documentation. So for example here, uh, they have a section on every single one of their components. And this component for the drawer uh, has a CSS section. And it breaks down each one of the different places that you can set um, CSS styles. So for example, this is a style applied to the root element. So the kind of the root of the, the drawer. Um, what I was applying mine to was the paper style. So kind of the format the theme takes is you can see that there's a little hyphen in between here. We have uh, movie paper or movie drawer and then the paper component. So if we actually look at our theme again, you can see that's where that came from. I had the movie drawer and then there's that hyphen and then the paper component. And then inside there, I can put whatever CSS styling I want. And then it's going to apply in, in that theme. Um, this can get a little tricky, and one thing that I recommend is if you're actually looking in um, the developer tools here, um, what you'll see is, oh, let's just make that bigger, um, here's that actual layout of uh, the drawer, and you can see that the, these class names are listed. So I have MUI drawer root, and that's the class that's being applied, and then MUI paper root, and so on and so forth. and on the very right here, you'll see that I have a movie paper um, class. So that's how those are being applied to um, different components. So you can kind of, if you, you know, scroll over this, you'll see that it highlights which control is actually being um, kind of described by this HTML markup. So uh, that's one way to kind of identify which components you're trying to theme and that kind of thing. So it's just a real cool way to kind of dig in and uh, really customize um, customize your theme. So our ant design theme is actually a, um, a pretty large theme. So if you do want to try to create your own theme, one example I would provide would be to go to the PSM1 file for um, PowerShell Universal, and the Ant Design theme is going to be in that PSM1 file, and it is uh, a pretty good example of how to actually dig into the theme. And we do a lot with not only the colors, but the components, because um, obviously we're taking away any kind of border um, rounding and buttons and getting rid of some shadows and stuff like that, and that's all done inside this uh, PSM1 file. So if you really want to start digging into theming, that's uh, kind of where I would recommend to kind of use as a starting point. You don't have to learn this entire topic to kind of do some basic color manipulation of your themes. And we're always looking for feedback. So if you have some good um, feature requests that you'd like to make around theming, uh, feel free to reach out and let us know.